Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm a geek. I really like working on mathematical problems and explaining them to people. I've retired from a job at a big industrial research lab where a lot of my work consisted of just that. Now that I'm on my own for a while, I'm looking for whether I can get the same sort of fun out of explaining things in videos. A lot of what I've done involves various aspects of geometry and image processing, but I'm likely to stray far and wide because the field of mathematics is all connected. In this video, I'll be covering a statistical analysis technique called k-means clustering. For an image analysis example, I'll be examining a project that I did about 12 years ago to bring a 1970s era church organ back to life. Let's take a look. I'll start by giving a little background. In 2009, I wound up having an odd opportunity to buy an electronic church organ from the 1970s at an estate sale. It's an organ of a model that's still common in the churches around here, and the model is considered historically significant enough that the Smithsonian has one. In case you didn't know, the organ can produce sounds that imitate the sound of almost any musical instrument, as well as a whole set of sounds that are unique to the organ. These are presented to the organist as a series of what are called stops, and organists select among these to, play the, to pick the orchestration for the piece they're playing. What this model had that was unique for the time was a set of alterable voices. These expanded the set of instruments available by allowing another instrument, such as a clarinet or trumpet, to have its tone programmed into the instrument by the performer. The tones of the instrument were recorded as digital samples on a set of punched cards. To alter one of the alterable voices, you turn a knob to show which voice you want to change, stick the card in the slot, and pull it out again. The bits on the card would go into a tiny CMOS memory inside the organ. This was revolutionary for the time. Virtually nobody had implemented any form of digital audio for music, even in this primitive a form. Along with the organ, I got a file of several hundred of the cards. Unfortunately, the card reader inside the organ was not in working order, and the paper of the cards themselves was beginning to deteriorate. When I took the console apart, the problem was fairly obvious. The card reader worked by having the card interrupt a series of light beams provided by tiny incandescent lamps, and one of the lamps had burnt out. Another couple burnt out as I was working on it. I decided that having to solder tiny lamps in place was a losing proposition, and I would replace them with LEDs and never think of them again. Then I got the idea that I could also dispense with the cards entirely. I built a device where a microcontroller could turn the LEDs on and off, controlled by a keypad and display beside the manuals of the organ. I surely didn't have access to an old card reader such as a mainframe computer would have used. Those things were about the size of office desks. Today they are either extremely expensive or else have been sold as scrap iron years ago. I said to myself, I do own a flatbed scanner, and I'm supposed to know something about image processing. How hard can it be? This episode of The Next Couple will be a redo of that image processing job to show some of the algorithms that came into it. As with many image processing jobs, the three big tasks are image registration, image segmentation, and feature recognition. Registration refers to establishing a relationship between the image and the world, or between two images. Its result is a mapping between pixel coordinates and coordinates in some other frame of reference. Here we want to tie pixel coordinates to rows and columns of the card, bearing in mind that the card may not be perfectly straight in the scanner. Segmentation, as the name suggests, divides an image into pieces. Generally, the pieces will represent objects in the image. Here, we will want to recognize what is green screen and what is cardboard, taking into account that the cardboard has both printing and handwriting on it. Feature recognition refers to recognizing objects of interest in an image, segmented or otherwise. Here, the features, of course, are the holes and the not holes, because zero bits are just important as one. The output of image processing will be a matrix of bits showing, for instance, that there's a hole punched at column 24, row 3, but not a hole at column 27, row 5. For this example, I'm going to start by trying to tell paper from green screen, and I'm going to approach it initially with a machine learning technique called k-means clustering. The clustering refers to the fact that we've got a bunch of data points, in this case the pixel values 
and were trying to identify natural groupings or clusters among them. The technique is more general and can be applied to almost any data set whose elements or tuples are continuously varying quantities. Let's look at a simple example where there are just two variables, x and y. We'll distribute a bunch of random data points selected to form a few loose clusters around the plane. K-means clustering attempts to find these natural clusters in a data set. It's extremely simple to program, which is one reason it's so very popular. Here's how it works. Start by choosing K points that represent cluster centers scattered about the space. One simple way is to choose K of the data points at random. Here I've chosen three. For each cluster, calculate the mean or centroid of all the points in it. Since there were k clusters, we calculate k means, which is where the procedure gets its name. These means become a new set of starting points for the clusters. Then we just keep doing this over and over, assigning points to clusters and replacing the cluster centers with the centroids of the point sets. Eventually, the process converges. When the assignments don't change, we stop. That's all there is to it, but its undirected fumbling about tends to converge on natural clusters of data points. Of course, with any machine learning technique, there's a lot to go wrong. Let's look at this example with more clusters and more centroids. Oops! The algorithm has trapped itself in a local optimum, where no small change to the point selection will improve things, but clearly it can do better globally. A bigger problem is that we often don't know how many clusters to choose, and the algorithm will happily fit as many values of k as we give it. If we give this data set a value of 3 for k, that is, we choose only 3 centroids, we will get 3 clusters. Fortunately, there are some small refinements that will let us improve the situation quite a bit. In order to do that, we need to figure out some way to assert that one answer is better than another, so that we can discard bad answers. I usually try to keep these videos to about 10 minutes, and it's obvious to me that this one is going to run quite a bit over, so I'm going to break it off here. Next time, I'll get into how to tame the k-means procedure to avoid getting stuck in a local optimum, and to select the right number of clusters. Then I'll get back to segmenting the punched card. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep calculating!